Hi folks, HR Funk here. With a handgun that I was asked to review, what I have here is a Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. Now, I owned one of the original Smith & Wesson Shields that I purchased back in 2014. In fact, back around that same time, I produced a review video on that handgun. And shortly thereafter, some other manufacturers started to come out with their own compact handguns, some of which were smaller than those original shields, but still held more ammunition than they did. And in fact, I traded my original Smith & Wesson shield when I purchased my Springfield Armory Hellcat because it was a smaller, easier to carry handgun that had more ammunition. So there was nothing ever wrong with that original shield. The trigger was nothing to write home about, but otherwise it functioned well enough and generally was a pretty good handgun. But Smith & Wesson, because of the competition from other manufacturers, redesigned the shield to have a greater ammunition capacity. So currently the nine millimeter shield has a, or shield plus, I should say, has an ammunition capacity with one magazine of 10 rounds and a larger magazine also comes with them and it has 13 rounds. This, however, is not a nine millimeter shield plus. This is a shield plus chambered for the 30 super carry cartridge. So this review is going to really be two reviews in one. I'm going to be reviewing the Shield Plus and telling you what I think of it as a handgun. And I'm also going to be reviewing the 30 Super Carry cartridge. This is going to be my first ever experience with that cartridge. And I've got to say, I'm kind of biased against it. I really don't think it does anything the 9mm cartridge doesn't already do, at least as well, if not better, other than add a couple of more cartridges into the magazine. Now, I'm saying that without ever having fired it, so maybe after I shoot it some, I'll decide I really like the 30 Super Carry and it's a great new cartridge. In any case, let's get on with the up-close shop review of the Shield Plus, and then later on, we'll head out to the range and see how it and the 30 Super Carry performs. So as usual, we'll start this up-close look at the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus in the manner that you bring it home from the store, which is in the box. And Smith & Wesson has gone back to their traditional cardboard box after quite a few years of using plastic cases of one sort or another. And some of their firearms do still come in those cases, but a lot of them these days are coming in just the plain cardboard box, just like the Shield Plus that you see here. When you get your new Shield Plus, it comes with two magazines. In 30 Super Carry, they are a 16 round magazine that you see here, and also a 13 round magazine, if I can get it out of the box. Also, it comes with a lock, an owner's manual, and some other propaganda down there, and that's pretty much it. So let me get these things out of the way, and we'll take a look at the Shield Plus itself. Here is our first up-close look at the Shield Plus. In general terms, it is a polymer frame striker-fired semi-automatic handgun, in this case chambered for the 30 Super Carry cartridge. And we can already see some of the features that we've come to associate with the M&P pistols over the years. It has the stainless steel slide and barrel that are covered with Armor Knight. And this is a very corrosion and abrasion resistant finish. If I went back and grabbed my original M&P from 2007, you would be able to see it shows very, very little Little wear even though it has been used extensively. Turning the pistol over to give you a right side view, you can also see the very large heavy duty extractor that is another historic characteristic of the M&P series. Turning our attention to the tail of the tape, the Shield Plus has an overall length of 6.1 inches with a barrel length of 3.1 inches, a height of 4.6 inches, a width at its widest point of 1.1 inches, and according to Smith & Wesson, unloaded it weighs 19.3 ounces, but I don't know if it was weighed sans magazine, or if that was with the 16 round magazine, or the 13 round magazine, so I will weigh this before the end of the video and find out what the actual weight is. By the way, folks, regarding those published dimensions, they are exactly the same for the 9mm version of the Shield Plus as they are for the 30 Super Carry. So if you're wondering, these are exactly the same size. Starting our top-down look at the Shield Plus, you can see that it has night sights. There are two tritium inserts on either side of the rear sight, and the front sight also has a tritium insert as well as a high-visibility orange or red circle around that tritium insert 
to give a very good sight picture. I like that. I think in virtually all lighting conditions that's going to be very serviceable. Also, the Shield Plus is optic ready. As you see here, the slide is cut for sites that have the RMSC footprint, so the smaller of the optic sites that are currently available for handguns. I mentioned before that you can see the front and rear slide cocking serrations on the shield, and the front serrations are minimal, but they do work. You have to grasp fairly hard, but you can manipulate the slide from the front. The rear serrations are very functional, so no problem whatsoever with functioning or operating the slide with those. Also, I neglected to mention a moment ago, the sights are dovetailed into the slide, so they are drift adjustable for windage correction if you need that. There is no elevation correction, however, the only way you'd be able to change elevation would be to replace the sights. Moving on to the pistol's controls, this version of the Shield Plus has the thumb safety that you see here. There is another version that does not have that. The thumb safety I don't really care for on a handgun like this. I understand the reason that it's there. This one is minimal at best and maintaining anything that resembles a shooting grip makes it very difficult to activate the thumb safety. To disengage it, however, it's not difficult to sweep it down, so at least there is that. And I would say if you have one of these, get used to any time you present the handgun, making sure you're swiping down to ensure that safety is disengaged. We can also see the slide stop. This is a non-ambidextrous slide stop. It is contoured and grooved in order to make it easier to lock the slide to the rear and to release it if you're going to use that to release the slide. The magazine catch has some texturing, I would call that minimal texturing, to aid in depressing the magazine release and making a reload or conducting a reload. And the magazine catch is reversible, so if you want to swap it over to the opposite side of the pistol, that is possible to do. Taking a look at the polymer frame of the Shield Plus, you can see there is no equipment rail. The front of the trigger guard is also not textured in any way. There's sort of a light texturing to this whole portion of the frame. It doesn't do a lot as far as increasing your grasp of that area of the frame, but you can actually feel it. The rear of the trigger guard is relieved to help get a slightly higher grip on the pistol to help with controllability. The texturing around the circumference of the grip is what I would call medium. This is not nearly as coarse as the texturing on the 2.0 full-size shield pistols, but there is some texturing there again to help aid with your grasp of this handgun. Similar to many models in the M&P line, the Shield Plus has a loaded chamber indicator in the form of a hole drilled in the rear of the barrel hood. If there were round chambered, you would be able to see the rim of the cartridge through that hole. This works okay in very good lighting conditions, but in adverse conditions it does not work very well at all. So I don't really like these. It's added to the design of many, many of the pistols in the M&P line, as I said, but I don't particularly care for it myself. As promised, we're going to take a look at the weight of the Shield Plus. With no magazine, it's weighing in at 17.5 ounces. With the 13 round magazine, that brings the weight to 19.6 ounces. With the 16 round magazine, we are at 20.1 ounces. Now I'll load these magazines up and we'll get a look at the loaded weight. Folks, before we get to the weight, <laughs> I've got to tell you something about these magazines. These were extremely hard to load. With the 16 round magazine, I got 15 rounds in without too much trouble, but that 16th round was very, very difficult to get in there. And with the 13 round magazine, it was difficult to even get this started. And once I got to about the 10th round or so, I was really working to get those things in there. And to get the 13th round in, I had to work and work. I finally got it started and I was able to press it against my bench with 
virtually all my strength and get that thing to slide back into position. But these were extremely hard to load. Hopefully they'll get easier once they get some use and those springs get some wear. But be aware of that. Back to the weight. So there's the unloaded pistol, the 13 round magazine, and one round for the chamber. Makes it 24 and a half ounces. And when we add the 16 round magazine, if I can get it to stay there, it's 26.2 ounces. One area where Smith & Wesson has made a lot of changes to the M&P pistols over the years, and you can see the Shield Plus is no exception, is with the trigger. The trigger in this case has a blade inertial safety that you can see here, and the brake is right at 90 degrees, and overall it's a pretty clean brake. You get a little bit of take up there, with that inertial safety you get to just prior to the 90 degree point and then with a little bit more pressure the trigger breaks you can see there is an over travel stop right here at the rear of the frame and the reset is very short and it's sort of an assisted reset because I can feel that pushing forward on my finger as I release the trigger and it's basically pushing it back out to the reset point so you can start your trigger press again if need be. So let's find out where the trigger on the Shield Plus is breaking. First pull is at six pounds and I don't think it feels that heavy. I might have over pulled it a little bit. The trigger on my original circa 2014 Smith & Wesson Shield was the worst trigger of any of the MP pistols that I've ever owned and this one feels considerably better than that one six pounds 7.4 ounces so it looks like that six pound pull the first time around was pretty accurate. Let's try one more. And that time a little lighter. 5 pounds 10.2 ounces for a 3 pull average of 6 pounds essentially. And again that really surprises me because I thought this pull was going to come in probably closer to 5 pounds. It actually feels better than you would expect with a pull weight of six pounds. So before we head out to the range, a couple of points about the 30 Super Carry cartridge. This cartridge was released a couple of years ago to much fanfare, and Smith & Wesson basically touted it as an in-between cartridge that was sort of a sweet spot between the 380 cartridge, which some people don't feel has quite enough oomph for defensive use, and the 9mm cartridge, which allows a few more rounds of 30 Super Carry in the magazine over and above what you could stuff into the same magazine with 9mm cartridges. There was also some performance data that came out, and at least in some tests, the 30 Super Carry tended to outpenetrate the 9mm cartridge. Now, again, all of this is paper ballistics, and since this is a smaller diameter bullet, maybe it's not such a shock that all else being equal, it might penetrate a little bit farther. I can tell you, I don't want to be shot with it. I don't want to be shot with a BB gun as far as that goes. But I'm just not convinced this is a tremendous cartridge that's going to take the defensive handgun market by storm. And in fact, over the course of the last couple of years, I don't think the 30 Super Carry has ever really lived up to the expectations of its designers. Even so, I want to try to give it a fair chance when we get out to the range. I'll be interested to see the controllability that I'm able to get firing this when I used to have a 9mm shield. It was not a shield plus, but the dimensions are pretty close. So it'll be interesting to see what the recoil characteristics are like, what the follow-up shots are like, and just generally what I can surmise with regard to the 30 Super Carry when we get out there and start to shoot it. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'm kind of biased against it, but who knows, maybe I'll change my mind. 
So anyway, let's head out to the range and see how the Shield Plus and the 30 Super Carry perform. Folks, as you can see, I've arrived on the range with the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. In just a couple of minutes, I'm going to start to shoot it. But I'm going to do a couple of things a little bit differently today than I normally do. For one, I'm going to try to kill two birds with one stone. Since I'm evaluating both the pistol and the ammunition, I'm going to be firing over my chronograph, and I'm going to conduct the chronograph test in conjunction with the accuracy test. So I'm not going to be shooting from the bench today. I'm not going to be at 15 yards. Rather, I'm going to be at 7 yards. And with this type of a handgun, with the short sight radius and all that, it's really not meant for shooting from the bench anyway, so I don't think we're going to lose that much not having that video footage. In any case, I have two different types of ammunition. I'm going to start out with the 100 grain Federal ammunition, which is a full metal jacket flat point bullet in 30 super carry. Then I also have some more defensive oriented Hornady ammunition. I'll tell you about that when we get to it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see the chronograph as I'm shooting, so I'll call out the velocities. Hopefully I'll be able to see them from here and tell you what they are as I shoot my way through this test. I'm going to start out with five rounds of the Federal Full Metal Jacket first, then I'll switch over to five rounds of the Hornady ammunition. When I get all done, we'll take a look at the group size on the target and see what the accuracy looks like. So here we go, five rounds of 100 grain full metal jacket Federal in 30 super carry. And when you see the target, there's gonna be a hole in it because I started this segment once and fired a shot, then realized I hadn't turned on my chronograph. <laughs> so hopefully it's gonna work better now since I turned the power on. That's, and I can't read it from here. I'm gonna to have to play it back on the chronograph when I walk down range. There's five rounds from seven yards. Let's go down range, take a look at the chronograph, and I'll take a look at the accuracy. And here are the velocities with those 100 grain Federal Full Metal Jacket loads. They are 1147, 1122, 1137, 1113, and 1111. The average velocity was 1126, and I'll calculate the average energy also and flash that up on the screen. So you'll be able to see that as well for this load. So for the accuracy back here, I think this was the very first one that I fired, the one that did not register on the chronograph because I hadn't turned it on. And the rest of these are in about an inch. So not bad accuracy at all from that distance of seven yards. Next up is some Hornady Critical Defense. This is also a 100 grain load. And this is the bullet that has the polymer insert to help facilitate expansion. So we're gonna get a look at the velocities with this ammunition as well and take a look at its accuracy. So here we go. And once again, from seven yards, we'll look at the velocity and the accuracy with the Hornady load. By the way, when you see the target this time, or specifically when you see my chronograph, you'll notice that I've added the sunscreens because after all morning of being overcast and dark, which was perfect for chronographing, when I start to chronograph, all of a sudden the sun comes out and it's dazzlingly bright. So hopefully that's not gonna cause us any problem in getting these velocity readings. Let's go down range. So for the review of our velocities with the Hornady critical defense load, shot number five was 1114 feet per second. Number four was 1124 feet per second. Three was 1109 feet per second. 
two was 1118 feet per second and one was 1121 feet per second so pretty close to what we saw with the federal full metal jacket loads I will once again calculate the energy and flash that up on the screen so you can see what that works out to at least the average energy the accuracy was really good that time around in fact I was feeling a little shaky when I was firing these you notice I fired them a little bit slower this time than I did the last time around and the best shots that I fired were the ones that are right here in the center of the target on these I was feeling a little shaky on this last one I was feeling a little shaky but even so all of those are right there so good accuracy with that Hornady load now let's move on and see how things go in some defensive drills and first up in our defensive drills will be controlled pairs from a distance of five yards the rest of this is all going to be with that full metal jacket federal load and since they're so close in velocity and the exact same bullet weight the recoil impulse and everything else should be identical between the two types of ammunition so let's see how the controlled pairs go So here are those six shots fired during the controlled pairs drill and really I was just coming up and I saw that bright orange front sight and as soon as I saw it superimposed in the chest I was hitting the trigger. So I wasn't really taking any time to try to make this very precise at all and the shots are obviously well centered in the chest. I think all of these would have been good shots. If I would have slowed down a little bit I'm sure I could have closed them in probably and kept them all in the center square. But let's move on now to some failure drills I'm going to back off to a distance of seven yards this time I'm going to have to slow down a little bit because I'm going to be firing two shots to the body and then one shot to the head and let's see how this goes and on we go to the failure drills and something I did prior to starting these drills is I swapped out the 13 round magazine that I've been using all this time for the 16 round magazine and this is fully loaded with 16 rounds in the magazine and one round in the chamber now you might have remembered me talking about back in the shop these magazines being hard to load and that 13 round magazine despite being loaded for a couple of days is still very very hard to load I had to download it at one point to load the Hornady defense ammunition in and when I changed it out and put the other ammunition back in it's still very difficult to load that magazine the 16 round magazine was not as difficult to load but it was very difficult to get the last round into it so I was curious if I was going to experience any functioning issues as a result of that extremely tight magazine spring and so far at least with the 13 round magazine that hasn't occurred let's see what happens with the 16 round magazine Go take a look at the target. So five out of the six in that center square from seven yards. This one I pulled off to the left just a little bit. I'm sure that's just me. No problem keeping the headshots in the head from that distance. And again, I'm just coming up basically and picking up that big bright orange front sight, superimposing it there. I slowed down a little bit that time to try to have a little bit more control over where those shots were gonna strike. But I'm not seeing any problems with the accuracy at all. So now I'm going to back up a little bit farther. This time I'll be shooting from 15 yards and we'll see what the accuracy looks like from there. All right, shots from 15 yards. Let's go take a look. I can't see him from here. One, two, three, four, and five, all inside the center square. I'll take that from 15 yards. I was not gonna try the Shield Plus from a distance of 25 yards, but with the accuracy that I'm getting here, I think I'm gonna give it a try. Looks like my shots are favoring the left just a little bit, but not enough to make it outside of that center square. So I think when I shoot these shots from 25 yards, I'm gonna hold probably over in this area on that center square, and we'll see where they hit.
Well, I definitely can't see those from here. Let's head down range and see where they hit. I'll use the green stickers to mark these shots from 25 yards. They are one, two, three, four, and five. So not bad, I'm hitting a little high from that distance, but that pistol really is not intended for 25 yard shooting. I was holding right about here and that did help to keep everything centered. For me, if I was going to keep the Shield Plus, I would drift that sight just a little bit to the right to compensate for this. But otherwise, the pistol is shooting very well. I think that's tremendous accuracy. Interestingly, the 25-yard group is about the same yard or the same size rather as the five-yard group, <laughs> which I marked with the black stickers. And that one, of course, I was shooting very rapidly. So again, accuracy is good, functioning has been good so far, and it's time to find out if the Shield Plus in 30 Super Carry is a seven yard tack driver. So I'm going to load three rounds into the magazine. I've already got a tack in the target. I'll back off to a distance of seven yards and we'll see what happens. So here we go. Is the Shield Plus in 30 Super Carry a seven yard tack driver? Oh, perfect, perfect elevation on that first shot just a little off to the left. So I'm gonna favor the right this time and see if we can drive that thing out of there. I don't know what happened to my elevation that time. One more shot to find out if the Shield Plus N30 Super Carry is a seven yard tack driver. No! <laughs> the Shield Plus and 30 Super Carry is not a seven yard tack driver. Although the accuracy really has been pretty good with both the handgun and that cartridge all the way through the testing that I've done. I am gonna do a little bit more testing with the Shield Plus because I've got part of that 50 round box of the full metal jacket Federal ammunition left and I've got quite a few rounds of the Hornady defense ammunition. And I really just wanna test the functioning of the Shield Plus. So I'm not gonna to try to do a split screen where you're gonna see me shooting and the shots hitting the target or anything else. I'm just gonna load up the rest of the ammo and cycle it through the pistol and see how it's gonna do. So as it turned out, I had just enough ammunition left to load up both magazines to full capacity, and I had two rounds left over, so I'll have one round in the chamber with a full magazine for both of these, although I did have to load a couple of rounds of the Hornady Critical Defense into the 16-round magazine along with the rest of the Federal to be able to load it completely. So this will be a little bit of a mixed magazine. I'm not expecting any functioning problems. It was slightly easier to load these two magazines. The 16 round magazine was a little bit easier to get that top round into. The 13 round magazine, still that last two or three rounds to try to get it fully loaded were very stiff. They were hard to get in, but they were a little easier than they were the last time that I tried. So maybe there is some hope that those springs are gonna lighten up a little bit and make loading easier. No problem with the 16 round magazine. Now let's try this 13 rounder. And hold on while I put my one round, actually I was gonna say my one round into the chamber. I already put the round into the chamber. Let me get that magazine topped off. And let's see how this one runs this time around. No problem with that one either. I didn't expect any functioning problems. Although when I first got out here, as stiff as those magazine springs were, I thought there could be a little bit of an issue there until the first two or three rounds are cycled out of that magazine. But as it turns out, they both ran perfectly fine. So that was a total of 70 rounds through the pistol during this range session. So maybe I should have turned the camera on that time because 
All the rounds for both of those magazines are right here, except one. One round got away from me, just to keep me honest, but the rest of those are right there in a pretty nice group, and I was, again, not trying all that hard. So now let's head back to the shop, and I'll give you my final thoughts on both the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus and the 30 Super Carry. And just like that, we've arrived back in the shop for some final comments on the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus and the 30 Super Carry cartridge. And just like I've done with the rest of this entire video, I'm going to divide my final comments up into comments on the Shield Plus and comments on the 30 Super Carry cartridge. Beginning with the Shield Plus, it's every bit the handgun that I thought it was going to be when I first took it out of the box. It is reliable, it is very accurate. As you saw in the video, shooting all the way back to 25 yards, I was able to keep shots well placed on the target. It did basically everything I could ask of it. My only negative comments have to do with the magazines being difficult to load and they are starting to show signs of getting easier. Hopefully that will continue. Fortunately, that tension on the magazine spring did not translate into malfunctions when I was actually shooting this pistol. The rear sight, for me, needs to be drifted ever so slightly to the right. I am getting that tendency to hit toward the left. We saw that definitely early on in the video, and we saw that with regard to the tack shot when I was trying that. This is optic ready, however, so it's not going to be difficult to install an optic and be able to dial that in very easily so we have point of aim and point of impact with this handgun. The trigger on this pistol is probably the biggest improvement I see over the handgun that I owned back in 2014. Actually, I purchased it in 2014 and owned it up until about 2018. I think I said earlier in the video that particular handgun had the worst trigger of any pistol that I've ever owned in the M&P line. It was just a very heavy, somewhat creepy trigger, and the trigger that is in this new Shield Plus is vastly improved. It breaks cleaner, it has a nicer reset, it allows for more accurate shooting, so kudos to Smith & Wesson. There have been some of their handguns and other products that have come out more recently where they claim to have improved the trigger, but I can say with certainty the trigger in the Shield Plus is much better than the trigger that was in my original Smith & Wesson Shield that I purchased back in 2014. So for anyone looking for a good, reliable, accurate CCW handgun, the Shield Plus is going to be a very good option. It comes backed by Smith & Wesson's one-year warranty and also the lifetime service contract. So if you ever have a problem with this handgun, you can send it back for repair. Now, I've mentioned recently the warranty service that you get from Smith & Wesson these days is not quite the top-notch service that they had back 10 or 12 years ago. They still do a good job. They'll still repair your handgun for as long as you own it, but it might take them a little bit longer to get around to doing that. So all in all, the Shield Plus is a very good option, and it's something that if you're in the market for one of these handguns, you might want to consider. Oh, one other thing. I really do like that bright orange front sight. It is just very easy to pick up. And of course, these are night sights, so even in adverse lighting conditions, it's going to be easy to see them. Now, moving on to the 30 Super Carry cartridge. I think what I'll say to preface my comments are I'm not quite as negatively oriented toward the 30 Super Carry cartridge at this point as I was before I shot it. It is certainly something that is, I don't know if formidable is the right word, but it's not something I would want to be shot with. It's probably going to be an effective defensive cartridge at any sort of reasonable defensive handgun distances. That said, what I was able to obtain with my chronograph shooting out of this handgun was not the ballistic figures that Smith & Wesson posts on their website or that Federal posts on their website or that Hornady posts on their website. All of them rate 30 Super Carry with a 100 grain bullet as having a velocity, muzzle velocity that is, of 1,250 feet per second. Now that on the Smith & Wesson website, which is the only one that listed a barrel length with their velocity figure, was from a 3.5 inch barrel. The Shield has a 3.1 inch barrel, but 
that's not very much difference and we were seeing what 130 feet per second less than the projected numbers or the the numbers that showed up on the websites so with the what I'll call estimated velocity <laughs> the energy was supposed to be 347 foot-pounds basically putting it in the same category as a nine millimeter which would have about that same energy rating from the muzzle with these lower muzzle velocities that i was actually getting the energy turned out to be with the federal full metal jacket 281 foot-pounds and with the hornady critical defense at 277 foot-pounds so again, the energy, much like the velocity, is not coming anywhere near where it was supposed to be for the 30 Super Carry. On top of that, the recoil impulse that I was getting from the shield was much closer to what I would have expected for a full power 9mm cartridge than what I would have expected for a 380 cartridge out of this same handgun. When we look at the energy figures and the velocity figures, again, this is all paper ballistics, but the 30 Super Carry really is coming in more or less right between the 380 ACP and the 9mm. And with both of those being much more well-established defensive cartridges with long histories and lots of fans behind them, I don't think we're ever going to see the 30 Super Carry rise to that level. We certainly haven't seen it in the last year or two since it was released. I think probably what's going to happen with the 30 Super Carry at best is it's going to take on the aura of say a 41 Magnum where it's going to have a loyal following that is going to adhere to this cartridge. And again, I don't want to be shot with it. I'm sure it's going to be effective enough at typical handgun defensive ranges. But here again, for someone like me, I'm much more invested in the 9mm in particular, and to a lesser degree, the 380 ACP, and I really just have no interest whatsoever in the 30 Super Carry. Now, just because it's not the cartridge for me doesn't mean it isn't the cartridge for you. If you're just starting out and you don't have a whole bunch of handguns that are already chambered in 9mm or 380 or whatever, you might want to take a look at the 30 Super Carry. If you can shoot it, see what you think of that recoil impulse, see what you think of the accuracy. And out of the shield, the accuracy was very good. I have to admit that the pistol alone was not producing that accuracy. The cartridge also was allowing the pistol to maximize the accuracy that we were seeing in the video. So if you're starting out, Take a look at the 30 Super Carry, see what you think of it. If you're somebody like me, you're probably going to shoot it just to see what it's like, and then that's going to be as much as you want to have to do with the 30 Super Carry. I am going to be returning this one back to House of Pain Armament with my thanks for letting me try out this handgun and the cartridge, and they also provided the ammunition that I used during the course of this video. And that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it'll save you 7% off your purchase from Optics Planet. And remember, House of Pain, both House of Pain Armament and House of Pain Munitions, with either one, you can use my discount code, which is HRFUNK, and that'll save you some money off your purchase from House of Pain. And lastly, don't forget the Target sponsor. Go to Targets Online, check out their inventory, and see if they have anything that's going to meet your target needs. See you next time, and until then, with something super, good shooting. Bye-bye.